knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Here ends the reading.
as this advocate that we hear about in our gospel lesson, this Holy Spirit comes down upon them, and there's flames appear above their heads, their hearts are filled with passion. and joy, and love, the love of God, the love of the fellowship that is there, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit within them, and they start speaking about God's love, and as they're speaking, they're speaking in their own language, but the people as they're walking by, whatever that person's personal language is, their native tongue is, whether they're, they're uh, 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 from Syria, whether they're from, from Rome, whether they're from wherever they are, all those, all those different places, and Julia, uh, the difficult names of ancient places that are, all these things, yeah, there's about a dozen places mentioned there in the passage, they walk by and they hear the words that the disciples are speaking, in that moment, we really are no longer disciples, but become apostles. To hear the words of God's love spoken in their native tongue. And in turn, and a crowd gathers around these now apostles. And the crowd is amazed. And then it begins to dawn on each of them in the crowd. Hey, how is this happening that they're talking? Aren't these Galileans? And yet we hear them speaking in our own native tongue. The I hear them speaking in my language, and the person next to me hears them speaking in their language. And this is the marketplace. So if they were all bilingual, they all had a native tongue. But they most likely will all were speaking either Greek or Aramaic, which would then the kind of uh, language, the business language of that time, so that you could see that they were from all parts of the empire. The Holy Spirit gives birth to the church. And our lesson. Now, the nuts and bolts of church, Jesus had been, been, been training, had been teaching, had been preparing his disciples for this. Certainly they had fellowship with one another. But the church, which, whose role is to proclaim God's kingdom, usher in God's kingdom by sharing God's love through evangelism, doesn't happen really in earnest. And so this gift of the Holy Spirit of God is Today is a high holy day in our church, as high a holy day as Easter and Christmas. It's an important day. Who is this Holy Spirit that gives birth to the church? So, Thomas Aquinas, who in the 13th century wrote his Summa Theologica, uh, kind of took theology about the Trinity and described the Holy Spirit as kind of being the, 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 the essence of the love between God the Father and God the Son. And that this relationship, this love that exists between God the Father and God the Son is so powerful and so real that it becomes a person unto itself. Now it's tempting to hear this and think, oh, well, I guess the Holy Spirit is kind of secondary to the Father and the Son. But it's not. When I counsel couples, counseling, one of the things that I share with them that, that, that uh, was shared with me before I got, I was married uh, is that you treat the marriage like a third person in the relationship and that as you care for one another it's important to care for that third person. 
that there's things you do for the other person, but then there's things you do for the relationship. Spirit is powerful, lowercase spirit. You can have a team, a sports team, but not a single superstar on the sports team. And they can be behind at halftime, at the bottom of the seventh, or the quarter, whatever sport it is, and that they come together and they have such a profound connection with one another, all the training and competing that they've done together, a relationship with the coach, and the coach stands and gives this inspirational speech, or maybe the team captain, and they cheer, and they pull together, and that team, with spirit, lowercase as spirit, can come out and prevail over the other team that has the superstar. We love those stories. Even when it's the team that beats your team with their spirit, you kind of grudgingly have to admire, well, yeah. Uh, go to a concert, you go to a sporting event, and you're in a crowd, that spirit, you can feel it. You can feel it. It's like thick in the air. And that's lowercase spirit. Uppercase spirit. Holy spirit. What we experience when we come together in church. photo albums in the background of the coffee table. And I leap through those photo albums. And I can see the looks on people's faces over the years here at Adventist the Church. And I can see the Holy Spirit written on their faces. Your faces. Our faces. Over the years. I've seen it over the past six months your pastor and interaction with one another. Even over Zoom, I've seen the Holy Spirit active. And sometimes the Holy Spirit is so thick in the air it just hits you over the head. And you can see that blaze look in each other's eyes the flames upon our heads. And other times we don't see it as Church is the thing. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors. And there's all the people. And that will be used to teach the lesson to the kids, but every bit is important for us adults. That the church really isn't the building or the steeple. It's the people. touched by the Holy Spirit. I have been in church in moments of difficulty and, and it was hard to sense the Holy Spirit in those moments. Contentious council meetings or contentious congregational meetings where our fears get the best of us. Our deep concerns are, are, are eating at us. And we come at each other. I've seen that over the years as a pastor. Or you walk into the church and you look around and say, where is everybody? Or some of our leaders look at, count the offering, and look at what's come in, and they go, oh, I don't think we're going to make budget for this one. Yesterday, uh, I co-initiated a wedding for uh, a young man, Jason. Uh, he was in my confirmation class years ago. Uh, and 
his, his uh, wife, Amanda, is her pastor that she knew growing up as well as me and I, pastor and I, both of Jesus. This wonderful worship service. Amber, an hour drive away, outside yesterday. Slight breeze, so the heat was bearable. And you could feel the Holy Spirit active. It was thick in the air the entire time. You could see it on everybody's faces. God's love. And God's love, love expressed in this wonderful relationship between this man and this woman, this husband and wife. The deep love of their families, the deep love that their extended families developed for each other as the two of them got to know each other and include their families as part of that. It was wonderful. The uh, groom's younger sister, Haley, who I also had in confirmation, uh, stopped me. Uh, well, yeah, she stopped me and we talked and we're catching up and she's in her last year of college. So you become a veterinary tech. And she shared with me that she was having a hard time finding a church where she could worship. She had a, and she said, I, I just can't feel at home. Like, they just don't know me. And even after I call a while, they're really nice and they welcome me, but it just doesn't feel like they know me. And I had a gut feeling as to what it was. And so I said it. And I said, well, you know, Haley, when they see you coming in, I wonder if they see you as someone to bring life to their congregation. That you are a young person. That they hope that you'll come, that you'll join their church, you'll get married, you'll have kids, and that your kids and you will be the future of that congregation. I said the short hand for that is butts and butts. Butts in the pew and butts in the plate. And she's shaking her head. And then I said, yeah, and I, you know, and I told her, I've been there. I've walked into churches like that. And, and you can almost feel it. You can almost see the vampire being slept. And she's like, yeah. Yeah, Pastor, that's exactly it. The vampire things come out. There are a lot of churches like that. And I told her, you know what? When they see you, that might be their reaction. I know. When they react to you that way, they're really nice, but you can sense in your heart that the way they are loving you is more about them and not you. I encourage you to try to give some of these places a chance. That once they really get to know you and get past their own stuff as they get to know you, that these many of these places will have a wonderful Christian fellowship. You will encounter the Holy Spirit and you will build it. But the responsibility to do that should not be on her. She has a powerful, strong enough faith. She wants church, church with the Holy Spirit, enough that I know that after telling Callie to do that, give some of these places a chance, she'll do it. But most people, when they come to a church, they come to the church because they're lonely. They come to the church because life doesn't have the spark they want. And they're coming here to get that. And if they don't sense that the first time, They are in need. They are hurting, especially our society now after everything we've been through over the past year and a half. Walk in the walk back out.
it is so appropriate that we are doing in-person worship on Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church. That as we gather again in person in this fashion, we step in the right direction of being the church. When you're worried about butts and bucks, you put the cart before the horse.
You want to set the Holy Spirit in your life. I encourage you to make space for the Holy Spirit. And look for the Holy Spirit. Look and you shall find. Make space for prayer. Studying scripture is wonderful. It's a story about how God interacts with humanity. You want to see how the Holy Spirit works? You know, it's like trying to find a bird out in nature. If you don't know what the bird looks like in the first place, you're not going to see it. Scripture tells us what it looks like. Study scripture. And it will hone your eyes to see the Holy Spirit at work. But most importantly, open your hearts. And coming to church is a place where, where we practice, we, 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 we open our hearts here, we, we, we encounter the Holy Spirit. I could preach multiple sermons on encountering the Holy Spirit and teach us Bible study. Do have a Bible study of how to sense the Holy Spirit and be led by the Spirit. We'll do that together. But on this birthday of the Holy of the Church, birthed by the Holy Spirit, let us be church. Let us come every week, not worried about butts or bucks or all the scary things that's happening outside in the world around us that we hear, you know, in our Acts lessons, scary things happen. But we come here, we're about encountering the Holy Spirit together. We're about being Advent Lutheran Church. We're about being the church, the universal church of the Holy Spirit. And then we will be fed. We will be inspired. And those who join us will be fed and inspired as well. Amen.
share the peace with one another. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O oh God. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O oh God. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit, so they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Hear us, O God. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need this day, especially those undergoing treatments. Hear us, O God. God of love, fill this congregation of Advent with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God. God of hope, those who have died in you, raise their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints, especially today and in Christ. Hear us, O God. In the hope of a new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now continue with the communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your Son who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who lifted on the cross, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night when she was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Now the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. Please rise for the prayer of the king. Well, spring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.